Hello students, this is Pathology Chapter 3, Part 2. Hypersensitivity or allergy comprises the same basic types of reactions that occur when the immune response is fighting microorganisms and protecting the body against disease. However, these hypersensitivity or allergenic reactions are exaggerated immune responses causing an immunopathologic condition along with t tissue destruction. Four main types of hypersensitivity reactions occur. They are classified by the nature of the immune response that causes the disease. Type 1 or anaphylactic type includes hay fever, asthma, or anaphylaxis. Type 2 or cytotoxic type includes autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Type 3 or immune complex type includes autoimmune diseases and type 4 or cell mediated type includes granulomatous disease and tuberculosis. Type 1 hypersensitivity is a reaction that occurs immediately within minutes after exposure to a previously encountered allergen. The plasma cells produce IgE in response to the allergen, and the IgE binds to mast cells located in tissue, causing them to release their granules containing histamine, a potential biochemical mediator of inflammation. This results in edema caused by increased dilation and permeability of blood vessels and in constriction of smooth muscles in the bronchioles of the lungs. A type 1 reaction may range from hay fever to asthma to life-threatening anaphylaxis. With type 2 or cytotoxic type hypersensitivity, antibodies combine with an antigen bound to the surface of tissue cells, usually a circulating red blood cell. It also activates the complement components and IgG and IgM antibodies in blood. This destroys the tissues that has the antigens on the surface of the cells. A type 2 reaction occurs in incompatible blood transfusions and in RH incompatibility between the mother's antibodies and the newborn's red blood cells. Immune complex type 3 hypersensitivity is when the immune complexes are formed between microorganisms and the antibody which is circulating in the blood. These complexes leave the blood and are deposited in body tissues where they cause an acute inflammatory response. As a result of phagocytosis, neutrophils die, releasing lysosomal enzymes, which cause tissue destruction. Type 4 hypersensitivity is a cell-mediated immune response, which is also called delayed hypersensitivity. T cells that have previously been introduced to an antigen cause damage to tissue cells or recruit other cells. This type of hypersensitivity is responsible for the rejection of tissue grafts and transplanted organs. Drugs can also act as antigens. Topical administration may cause a greater number of reactions than oral or parenteral routes. However, the parental route may cause a more widespread and even more severe reaction. Patients with multiple allergies or an autoimmune disease are more likely to have allergic reactions to drugs. Drugs can be involved in any of the previously described hypersensitivity reactions. Type 1 hypersensitivity to a drug can include anaphylaxis, hives, angioedema. Type 3 hypersensitivity to a drug is known as serum sickness. And drugs can also be involved in type 4 hypersensitivity reactions 
which can cause contact dermatitis, skin inflammation, and contact mucositis. Under normal circumstances, the immune system learns to differentiate between one's own cells or tissue and foreign substances early in embryologic development. This recognition produces a type of immunologic tolerance. An autoimmune disease, the recognition mechanism breaks down and certain body cells are no longer tolerated. The immune system then treats body cells as antigens, creating an immunopathologic condition. An autoimmune disease may involve a single cell type or a single organ or may even be more extensive involving multiple organs. Certain types of tissue and even entire organs may be damaged. Genetic factors may play a role in the predisposition of an individual to autoimmune disease and viral infection may also be involved. Some autoimmune diseases are also called connective tissue diseases. Several autoimmune diseases have oral manifestations and are described in this chapter. Immunodeficiency is an immunopathologic condition, a deficiency in number, function, or interrelationships of involved white blood cells and their products. It may be congenital or acquired. Infections and tumors may occur as a result of the deficiency. Oral diseases with immunologic pathogenesis include aphthous ulcers, urticaria and angioedema, contact mucositis and contact dermatitis, fixed drug eruptions, erythema multiforme, lichen planus, reactive arthritis, also known as Reiter syndrome, and Langerhans cell disease. Recurrent aphthous ulcers, also known as canker sores or aphthous stomatitis, are a painful type of oral ulcer for which the cause remains unclear. Aphthous ulcers are one of the most common oral lesions, occurring in about 20% of the general population. They are frequently occur in episodes, the first episode of these ulcers usually occurs in adolescence, and they are somewhat more common in females than in males. The clinical appearance and location are important in establishing a diagnosis. Trauma is the most commonly reported precipitating factor in the development of aphthous ulcers. They are often reported to occur after trauma to the oral mucosa during dental procedures for example, in the area of film or sensor placement during radiographs or at the injection site for local anesthetics, or with the manipulation of oral tissue during dental hygiene treatment. Some patients associate the initiation of abscess ulcers with eating certain foods such as citrus fruits. Substantial evidence indicates that aphthous ulcers have an immunologic pathogenesis. They occur in three forms, minor, major, and herpetiform. Again, aphthous ulcers can be related to trauma, food associations, menstruation, systemic disease, tobacco cessation, and stress. Minor aphthous ulcers are discrete, round, or oval ulcers. They occur on movable mucosa and they are up to one centimeter in diameter. An erythematous halo surrounding a yellowish white fibrin surface is a typical appearance. A patient may have a single or multiple lesions. The ulcers may have a prodrome of one to two days. Major aphthous ulcers are also called Sutton's disease, 
periadenitis mucosa necrotica recurrence. They are larger than minor aphthous ulcers, so they are larger than one centimeter in width. They are deeper and longer lasting. They're very painful, normally occur in the posterior of the mouth, and may require several weeks to heal. In some cases, they may also require a biopsy. Here are some examples of major aphthous ulcers. Herpetiform aphthous ulcers, also known as herpetiform aphthi, are tiny, one to two millimeters in size, and they are very similar in appearance to the herpes simplex ulcers. They are painful and generally occur in groups. Abscess ulcers and systemic disease. Abscess ulcers are associated with the following systemic diseases. Chronic gastrointestinal, Crohn's disease, gluten sensitivity, inflammatory bowel syndrome, intestinal lymphoma, ulcerative colitis, arthritis, Bechet syndrome, and childhood periodic fevers. The treatment for aphthous ulcers generally involves topical corticosteroids, topical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, and for pain relief, lidocaine and benzocaine rinses. Systemic steroids may be needed for the treatment of major aphthous ulcers. Nicotine replacement therapy has been suggested to be helpful when aphthous ulcers occur in association with tobacco cessation. Urticaria, also known as hives, appears as multiple areas of well-demarcated swelling of skin. It may include itching, also known as pruritus, and lesions are caused by localized areas of vascular permeability in superficial connective tissue. Angioedema. The lesions are caused by diffuse swelling as a result of increased permeability of deeper blood vessels. The skin covering the swelling appears normal, and they usually do not itch. Urticaria and angioedema causes could be idiopathic, infection, trauma, emotional stress, systemic diseases, ingested allergens, and the treatment could involve antihistaminic drugs or epinephrine. Contact mucositis and dermatitis. Lesions result from contact of an allergen with skin or mucosa. It involves T cells in a cell-mediated immune response. It is a type 4 hypersensitivity. Possible causes are preservatives in local anesthetics, topical medications, acrylics, metal-based alloys, epoxy resins, flavoring agents, gloves, and the treatment is usually accomplished with topical corticosteroids or systemic corticosteroids. This concludes Pathology Chapter 3, Part 2.